Hi everyone, welcome. I'm working on something I like to make every year. You saw me make the three resin soap, the three wise resins recently, but I also always love to make my Santa salve each year, which is a resin salve. However, this year I decided to use the triple resin that I made in that you saw me make for the soap in my salve as well. I actually made that soap a few weeks ago, so it's going to be in the store within the week. Uh, it's already cured. I started it early, so it would be ready plenty of time for the holidays. And the salve, because it has no cure time other than aging the resins, which I have already done. Uh, and I'm working on a pine needle tincture here that's, uh, well, that's for another recipe, but you saw the pine needles recently in a video for the actual soap, so I've just got them here soaking in some vodka. And we'll talk about that more in an upcoming video. Um, but I'm going to be putting the resin together here. I've got my big block of beeswax here, which I've reduced quite substantially over time. And I will never again <laughs> get it poured in a giant block like this. It's one thing to have one pound or two pound or even five pound blocks that you can easily maneuver and cut and work with. This big sucker <laughs> is a booger. Well, it started out as what was it, 40 pounds, 50 pounds? Anyway, it has been a monstrous task cutting this. I have pried it, I have cut it, I have stabbed it, I have chopped it, um, short of using a chainsaw on it. It is a good hard wax, nothing wrong with it. It's great stuff, I love using it. And it's what I've used, you know, I'm using here. But I'm just gonna suggest that in Unless you have the right tools, which I think I have a lot of tools uh, on here on my farm, but this is a job to work with. If any of you have some tips on cutting down giant blocks, and believe me, this is not like cutting through soap, whether it be glycerin or cold process or hot, anything else. This is like cutting through a tough rock, <laughs> or it seems that way to me. Anyway. So I'm going to get my beeswax on the double boiler, and then we're going to combine it with our resin. So bear with me while I get that ready, and we're going to put this together and can it. And I got some cute little cans I'm looking forward to showing you to put this in this year. And it's also going to be a larger uh, container than it was last year. So more value, I'm hoping, too. All right, so join me back in a few moments. All right, so I'm now going to combine my wax with my resin oils. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> it truly does. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes here and just rest. I know that sounds silly, but it lets the air bubbles subside a bit and allows the uh, wax to meet the same temperature as the oils. And if you don't do that, sometimes you can end up with a separation. I just like to give it 10 to 15 minutes for it to start to solidify just slightly before I put it into the container. So we'll come back in just a moment and then we're gonna put this in our containers. All right, so I think we're now at a temperature where I can get these poured.
right. Sorry I was so quiet. I just, you know how sloppy I can be pouring. So <laughs> just trying to be careful there. I wanted to make sure not. I did make a little mess here and there, but nothing too severe. For me, that's what I call a success. All right, so now we just wait for them to cool and get them capped. And there. We have them. Aren't they cute? <laughs> They're just great. <laughs> I I think I'm a kid at heart when it comes to the holidays. I really am and always have been. And I like the kind of comical. Whoop, let me wipe that one. Had a little bit on the edge there. Um, sort of the childlike quality of them as opposed to, you know, more serious uh, uh, adult Christmas designs. I kind of like the childlike nature of them. <laughs> and something so serious on the inside. A bit of frankincense, myrrh, and pine resin. I, you know, it's on my hands now. I just adore it. Uh, it is one of the most, to me, one of the most respectful things we can do for ourselves and for nature. What do I mean by that? Well, in my opinion, by using resins like this to both perfume our body, because I think of this, this you could equally wear this just for the scent alone. And you smell like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and, but also, there's just something, I think, just so wonderful about being able to use what naturally is given to us on the planet for our own benefit. And what better way to do it than in these gorgeous little containers? <laughs> They're a little tacky. I think that's kind of what I like about them. Anyway, everyone, these will be in the shop along with the resin cones. And uh, let me know your thoughts. It's, if nothing else, I'll enjoy them because I, I love this stuff. It truly does smell wonderful. The pine resin is the top note. And then the frankincense and the myrrh is probably the, the bottom note that I'm gathering, but the frankincense I can make it out, but the pine resin is, of course, the strongest scent. And it is so healing and wonderful, and I just love it myself, and I hope you do too. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye. <laughs>